June is an insane month of LEGO releases and it just got even crazier with today's announcement of the new Pac-Man arcade set. Retailing for $270 and constructed from 2,651 pieces, this set is coming out on June 1st for LEGO VIPs and June 4th for everyone else. Does this set get added to my long list of wanted sets for the summer? Well, I know you're here expecting a detailed breakdown of this set, so let's get into it. I'm going to state the obvious up front. This set is ingenious in how it's built. Let's start with the main draw of the set, the Pac-Man arcade game itself. At 10 inches wide and about 12 inches tall, the Pac-Man arcade is about the size of a Lego modular building. What immediately stands out to me are the angles. The front bottom of the set is at a 75 degree angle using black two by one by three inverted slopes. The other 26 studs of the front are constructed using snot techniques. Note the two by six and two by two tiles in black along the front. And on the right hand side, notice you have this neat coin slot that lights up when you push the white button above it and to the back. The slight depth offset of this coin slot is creative, it's effective, and I like how the gray border is using 1x2 cheese slopes on the top to allow the angle to work. This is well done. What's perhaps not as well done are the use of stickers throughout the set. The coin slot is a sticker on top of what looks to be a 1x2x2 transparent clear panel. Above that on the joystick platform to the right is a 6x6 tile with a start game sticker and to the left another 6x6 tile with a sticker depicting the classic ghost chasing the Pac-Man character. On both sides you have a yellow 8x16 tile with a massive sticker for the arcade artwork and I like the artwork, maybe I'm just not a big fan of the stickers. There are additional smaller stickers in the set, including the back of the ghosts on the display stand, their mouse for the alternative view are stickered, as are a number of the tiles on the mini build for the arcade game. I'm having a harder time determining if the artwork across the top is printed or stickered. It kind of looks printed to me, but you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. The joystick is nicely constructed using the 1x1 one one Technic pin connector piece in metallic silver. The red top is appropriate and I really like how they use the red triangle tiles for the direction pad. Taking a look at the sides shows you just how complex this build is. Yes, there are some large panels in yellow, but there are also a variety of bricks and plates that are key for building the interior mechanisms of the set. The overall yellow and black trim are both fitting and striking. The true genius of the set comes with the game screen itself. At first glance, it may not appear to be too crazy, but there's a lot going on with this. First, as much as I don't like the stickers mentioned earlier, the tiles that form the level map here are printed. You get a lot of these in a number of sizes, 1x2, corner, 1x3, and 2x2. More of these printed tiles appear on the Pac-Man and Ghost stand themselves, and I think these are pieces that could be used creatively in mocks. Second, the board is also set up at an angle, which is at least partially accomplished by using some lipstick-like pieces stuck in the Technic half pins on the back, connected to clips, and on the top, there are additional Technic pieces that hold in that part of the screen. Third, the picture from the backside is instrumental in depicting just how complex this build is. You've got Technic half pins placed inside a large Technic pin grid, I'm not quite sure what else to call that piece. To set up the tiles for the level map, you've got tan bars to represent the pack dots, plus some light gray bars to help construct the tank tread pieces that are used for the movable component of the set. This is perhaps the most ingenious part of the set, as well as perhaps its 
the biggest detractor. Placing all of these small pieces promises to be a rather tedious task. Fourth, you have two working gear mechanisms in the set. One at the top is connected to a Technic gear that allows you to change the score as you play the set. From the looks of it, there are four stickers that represent the different scores. The other mechanism is most impressive, as it allows you to essentially play the game as you wind a crank mechanism on the right hand side. And honestly, the simplicity of this mechanism is incredible. It reminds me a bit of the loop coaster and how they set up the Technic mechanism for that. There are just a handful of gears and a ball rotating joint that allows the Pac-Man to move through the center of the game level by turning that crank mechanism. The video on the set's webpage shows you a bit more about how it works, and I think it's really effective. Also on the inside of the game is a pocket for a vignette containing an arcade scene with a clever tile pattern, a gumball machine, a minifig, and a small Pac-Man arcade game. These look like nice mini builds, although I'm not convinced that they're needed for this set. I will note that it looks like we're getting the triangle tiles in teal and the 2x2 two two facet tile in light blue for the first time in this set. The Pac-Man and Ghost display stands, on the other hand, look and feel appropriate for the set. Many of the UCS sets we get in Star Wars have display stands. You have large depictions of the Pac-Man and the ghosts, which can be rotated to show alternative ghost faces. Also on the stand are some printed one-by-one -one round tiles with Pac-Man and the ghosts. There is a printed one-by-one -one round tile with Cherry included for the game screen as well. We get some new pieces for these builds as well. The 3 by 3 corner curve slope makes its first appearance in blue, orange, and red in this set. And the printed 2x2 two two round tile with the blue eye looks, as best as I can tell, to also be a new printed piece. So what are the key takeaways from this set? Well, first, LEGO is piggybacking on its successful 18 plus Mario releases. The NES and the 64 uh, question mark block are successful sets. And I know this because of how long they've been available for purchase. I don't yet know how successful the Atari set was from last year, but there are two important things about these sets. They combine a high level building experience with nostalgia. And this set checks off both of these boxes. What will determine its overall success is whether or not there are a relatively equal number of people passionate about Pac-Man as there are about the NES. And given Pac-Man's status as one of the best performing games of all time, this is certainly a possibility. Second, this set has a strong display potential. There's no doubt that people will immediately recognize it when they come into your house and see it sitting on a shelf or on a table. I will also add that it's not too big. Again, it's roughly the size of a modular building, which as a standalone display piece makes it easy to show off. It's easier to display than Rivendell or a series of modular buildings. Third, people are naturally going to question the price of $270 for this set. Well, I'm not a huge fan of using the price to piece metric for those who do use it, this fits right in with the 10 cents per piece ratio that fans have been using for well over a decade. I will add that unlike some of the other large D2C sets from last year and even earlier this year, there aren't many unnecessary components. Perhaps the vignette is a bit superfluous, but it's unlikely to be adding more than say $10 to this set. Personally, given its modular-like size, I would say this set is worth about $250 ideally, but given that it's a licensed set and there are inflation concerns, especially if this set is going to be for sale for a long time, $270 isn't an outlandish price. Will I be buying it come June 1st? I don't know. I'm personally sold on the Ninjago City markets as well as getting a couple of those botanical garden sets. 
After that, if this video gets well over 500 likes, I'll strongly consider picking this set up and doing a more in-depth review. So make sure you smash that like button. So that does it for my detailed breakdown. Hey, real quick, before you go, why don't you check out some of our other June reaction videos down here on the right-hand side of the screen. Thanks for watching, and always remember to keep building together.